of the uh, Edmonton Public School District's uh, Spring League of Legends Tournament, uh, sponsored by uh, the Gaming Stadium. Uh, I'm John the Batman Hat, and I'm joined again today by... Slainer, yep. <laughs> and uh, we're happy to bring you the second day of the thing. I hope you all enjoyed the show uh, yesterday. Today we have a great mixture of bangers coming up, but actually what we're going to do right off the bat here is take a look at the brackets and just see how the day, the first day ended up and kind of where all the teams are sitting, and we're going to go through each pool in order, so... Uh, we'll start with uh, pool one here as soon as my producer gets it up on the uh, uh, stream here. All right. So as you guys can see, Osborne 2 sitting up at a solid 3-0 lead. Each team has, has uh, two games left to play. Uh, so Osborne sitting up 3-0. So if they do manage to secure those last two, has a very dominant position to probably take the group. And just in case you all don't know, the top two teams will make it to playoffs uh, out of each pool. And we do have four pools. So Osborne 2 sitting up at 3. McNally and Lizard are tied up at 2-2 two, two, uh, two, two apiece. And Strathcona Londonbury down at one. And Amoscotchi is, is down at uh, zero currently. Uh, so actually, the first game of the day will be from Pool A, which will be McNally versus Strathcona. You can see McNally sitting up at two there. So they really want to get that win so they can tie it up with Osborne and stay near that top piece. Well, uh, McNally uh, really, uh, sorry, Strathcona need to get themselves up to two and maybe even have a hope of making it into the playoffs. Though I think the cutoff is probably around four ish games to get into top two, or at very least three. Uh, then we can go take a look at a pool two real quickly here. And sorry, I just need to quickly open it up on my own thing. All right. Um, oh, it's not updated with the scores properly because Smash UG is a not the best application at times. But as you guys can see, Jasper Place is sitting up at a solid 3-0 currently. Uh, Osborne 1 and Wagner are tied 2-2 apiece. A center high in Kenningworth are unfortunately down 0-3, so it's very unlikely they'll make the playoffs. And Bessie Nichols is at one two so definitely looking like jasper place if they do keep up their momentum is going to take this uh group and osborne and wagner are heavily competing probably for that second uh spot there i do believe that we're having uh uh this group's game is going to be last uh today so we'll get to see kind of the last push for playoffs yeah exactly to see which one will come on top there and then we'll take a quick detour into pool three here um for our and then we have Ainley 2 and Lazert are currently sitting up 2-2 uh, two, two apiece. Uh, Queen Elizabeth and Londonbury are at 1-2, so they're sitting, uh, looking, are sitting a little bit on the lower end, and Westmount is down 0-2. Uh, now, our third game of the day will actually be Ainley 2 versus Lazert. And as you see, they're the two leaders in the group. So whoever takes that game gets that lead in uh, potentially going first, and then the other one is going to probably be left to comp uh, compete with Queen, Eli Queen Elizabeth and Londonbury for that second position in playoffs. So this one will actually be a pretty competitive group, and I think this game is going to really set the tone for who's going to take first place in the group. Actually, these two, Ainley 2 and Lizard 1, they're going to be playing in our third match of the day as well. So yes. we'll get to see this action head on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then quickly jumping over to our fourth group here, just so we can all take a look at that. Uh, so Ainley 1 is currently sitting up at a very dominant 2-0 over the other teams. Uh, Center High and Ross Shepard are at one. Uh, Center High only has the one win there. I presume maybe one of the scores didn't get updated or something like that. Uh, Ross Shepard sitting at a solid 1-1. One, one, and Jasper Place is sitting at 0-3. And uh, Bracco did drop out of the bracket, if I remember correctly. So they will not be playing. And it's just actually the four teams up at the top there. So look, and actually our last game of the day uh, will be... Oh, sorry, we already talked about that one. Uh, but Ainley won looking pretty dominant in this group. And our last game of the day will be Osborne 1 versus Wagner, which we did cover in a previous uh, game there. But anyway, now that we have taken a quick look at the bracket, we'll also be coming back to this throughout the day uh, before each of our four matches. So you guys can get an update and know what's going on throughout the day. So anyway, moving on to our first match, we're going to have a Gnally versus Strathcona. We do have the players in the lobby and ready to go. So we should actually be able to get into champ select very quickly here. Yeah, today is all of the top teams are in each group are going to be playing each other today. And I'm just so excited to see how this is going to turn out. Oh, and just a small update for everyone. Uh, we're going to be using Pro Draft throughout the day, uh, just so to keep it consistent. So every single game will be done on Pro Draft. We'll get into the game, just blind pick. Everybody picks their champions, and then we'll be able to get started right away. So hopefully we'll be able to have that uh, nice little overlay so you can all see it. And uh, we'll be getting started right away here as the players open up Pro Draft and start making their selections. So yeah, we're uh, I'm sorry. So John, yesterday you were the one who was asking me all the questions. So now I want to ask you a question. Oh boy. I guess, what are you kind of expecting for from McNally and Strathcona? 
Um, now I haven't seen them play too, too much. I didn't see the previous games because actually today we luckily get to see uh, eight different teams that we didn't get to see play yesterday. So you guys get a little bit more variety, get to see some of the other teams in the bracket. But I think you're going to see a lot of dominant picks, but I think a lot of priority is going to go either A into a, a strong farming jungler or maybe an engaged support like you were touching on quite a lot in the uh, on the previous day. Because I think both those positions give a very advantageous thing, particularly I think at the level of play you're going to see from this tournament. An engaged support is just so incredibly strong because even if your team isn't the most coordinated, most people can watch a Leona go in and be like, I'm going to follow that and hit my buttons. And then a farming jungler you can usually play pretty safe. And as long as your laners are competent, they can just go hard on the jungle, start counter jungling and stuff like that, and then just snowball the game out of control. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's going to be very crucial that like these teams prioritize jungle and support picks in this case. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to see that. And it looks like we are getting started underway here. So we'll have our first three bands coming out. Just for anybody new in chat that wasn't here yesterday, a tournament draft does go in the format of each team gets three bands in a row. Then each one picks three champions. And then after that, there's two more bands. And then the final two champions on each side are picked. Um, and then I think it is, if it's red side, I think gets first pick. And then blue side gets uh, two picks no, after. Actually, I got it yeah, backwards. Blue side, <laughs> yeah, blue side gets first pick. Red side gets the last counter pick. Yeah, so it's very first pick is you can particularly uh target the like really strong champions of the patch or something you really want so maybe like that leona i brought up earlier who is actually a very dominant support pick might be something you prioritize in that first pick and then the other team gets two picks right after and but as you said a key thing is they get the counter pick right at the end so they can save their solo laner until later on uh, but actually would you like to reflect maybe on just some of the bands we're seeing come out here early on um well, like you said, the Leona pick was kind of a uh, just really prominent yesterday, and I also saw Udyr a lot as well. Uh, again, it's another farming jungler who can, although it might he might not have the best gang ganks because he just runs at you and slaps you, runs away. <laughs> <laughs> but he get he gets the job done as well. Another pick that yesterday that kind of caught my eye was Scion. And mainly because he's like an infinite scaling tank. If you don't have a solid AD carry who can deal consistent damage, you're just not going to shred through that champion. Exactly. And unfortunately, it looks like they're a little late on the ban there. So unfortunately, forfeiting their third ban. And they're uh, it's currently just locking in. So, ooh, a Kaisa picked first. So this means Strathcona is going likely for maybe a later game comp, or they're going to look at a comp to maybe set up this Kaisa and get her rolling. But an excellent pick on the other side of Caitlyn. Because Kaisa has such low range in the early game, Caitlyn can make her laning phase pretty insufferable. I wonder if they're going to pair this up with uh, Morgana or, may or like another range support just to amplify the range. Yeah, and exactly, because you also get the uh, combo uh, with Caitlyn of, if you have a and support that can just CC them down, Caitlyn can put a trap underneath and it just leads to so much burst damage and so much CC that particularly for someone like that is exploitable in the early game, you can there really get go. the lane there and a great call on the Morgana. You're just going to see a lot of combos of Morgana hits her Q, Caitlyn puts a <laughs> trap underneath and the Kaisa loses over half her health or more and it's not not a good time. So I'm mean, interested to see if they pick something to maybe keep the Kaisa alive maybe like maybe even leona not to engage but more just like keep the opponents away or maybe they'll just go for a healer i'm thinking maybe a tom kench but like because tom kench he has the ability to kind of eat up or just what is it called what is that ability called <laughs> devour i think yeah devour just devour champions get them away to safety and we're also seeing the galio coming out and galio again he's another I'm assuming he's going to be uh, picked in the mid lane, but obviously he could also go support. But considering the that Kayla Morgana has, I'm I'm going to assume it's going to go mid lane, and he kind of wants to get out of the lane uh, to be able to influence the side lanes as well. And a Wukong pick, I haven't seen that in a while. No, I haven't either. But it's very uh, prominent in the top lane. Uh, but Galio just being such a consistent mid lane 
uh, like mid laners, like he's a very safe laner for one, so you can usually get through laning phase alive, but you're also just so naturally tanky that you actually, you form a, a great front line for your Kai'Sa, and Wukong also pairs into that great, because the Wukong, you know, has a ton of armor just based in his kit, so he's very, very tanky, particularly in the AD matchups top, but he has a ton of knockup with his seat, with, uh, with his ultimate, and he can actually just zone people off his Kai'Sa, because the Kai'Sa is kind of your main carry in this comp, and if you're uh, top and mid lane do manage to win, You've got this ridiculously strong uh, front line that Kaisa doesn't even be doing that well to just melt people in front of her. Oh yeah, definitely. And also the Kha'Zix is also another pick that I haven't seen in a while either. Yeah, so you reflect like what, what advantages does Kha'Zix bring uh, to the jungle matchup as opposed to some other picks? He kind of has the... He, well, he's very stealthy, first of all, once he gets to that level 6. So he's going to be able to jump out of nowhere and maybe surprise the Kai'Sa or surprise a champion in the side lane. And that's going to give Mc McNally some side lane pressure as well. An interesting band coming out of the Pantheon, too, trying to avoid like another roamer, because maybe they could pick the Pantheon support, but I just don't know how good that is into the Morgana uh, with the Black Shield and the stun. Now, it doesn't negate the damage that Pantheon does, but it does remove the stun, which I think is pretty key to setting up your Kaisa when you're trying to fight in lane. So I'm not entirely sure what the Pantheon ban, but maybe they on jungle as well. Yeah, and McNally, they still need to pick their two solo laners. I'm assuming they're going to leave the counter pick for top lane, and never mind. <laughs> I think it's better to pick towards that top lane because you're fairly oh, yeah, confident the Wukong, Wukong is going to go into the top lane. Now there I mean, was a little bit of niche. Support. Yeah, I so said there's some niche Wukong support I've seen in the uh, LEC oh, of all man. things. Oh, and they got the Seraphine. Oh, that the, okay, that's everything you want with the Kaisa. Seraphine is not only extremely strong right now. Uh, Moonstone Renewer is also ridiculously strong at the moment. Would you like to maybe just break down for chat exactly what the Seraphine with Moonstone Renewer likes to do? Oh man, okay, Seraphine. If she gets the Runestone Renewer, she's just going to heal everyone up with every, throughout the whole team fight. It's just so much healing, and they're just not going to. McNally is going to struggle if, uh, in these team fights if they do not get rid of the Seraphine first. And one thing to note is that Seraphine's damage uh, in, so, in dual lanes, I believe, did get nerfed in patch 11.5, which is the patch that we're playing on right now. Yeah, it's interesting to see. So she's definitely going to be more in that supportive role, but I think that's fine when you have such a big tanky picks like Galio, Wukong, True. Trundle. So I think it's going to be interesting because Strathcona has very clearly uh, drafted a team fight comp with a little bit of pick potential in the Galio with the Seraphine alt and even the Wukong alt in the top lane. Trundle is very, very good at dueling. He doesn't have a lot of CC, so his ganks aren't the strongest, but you can see each lane has very distinct CC in order to enable the Trundle to come in and gank. So would you like to maybe break down McNally's comp too? What are some of the strengths and what are they going to be playing around? Well, McNally, in the, in like the mid, in the mid late game phase, they're going to be going for the side lane pressure because Camille and Rise, they are both very strong side, uh, side lane pushers. And then a lot, uh, Caitlyn can, Caitlyn and Morgana can just hold their ground in the mid lane while Camille and Rise just push out the side lanes, getting, gaining an advantage. Kha'Zix can come flying out of the jungle from out of nowhere as well. However, one thing to note is that Trundle, I don't think he has a very good uh, pr uh, champion to steal armor and stats from. No, oh, yeah, with uh, McNally lacking a, a dominant, like a just pure tank pick, Trundle's alt does diminish in value. It will allow him to potentially duel the Kha'Zix if they're on even ground or even maybe like enable some of the ganks and stuff like that. But that is a pretty key thing to look at because Trundle usually is looking for that frontline tank and looking to just shred their stats with his ultimate. But with McNally just simply lacking a frontline tank, you don't run into that. But the also disadvantage of this too is McNally really doesn't have the strongest team fight. Now they have a ton of poke damage in the form of the Caitlyn and Morgana and they have a lot of keep out, but I think they're going to play more around that. Like as you're kind of saying that split, maybe one, three, one comp or just play around the map, go for objectives, go for picks as opposed to this Raw team fight because Strathcona is just so so strong in that regard. Yeah, definitely. And then McNally, they're good. It's not like they don't have strong team fight. I mean, Camille. Well, I guess they do have a lot of uh, chain CC and layering with the Rise, with the Morgana, Caitlyn, Camille as well. It's just Strathcona. They have a lot more CC, uh, AOE CC as well. 
Yeah, just I think simply having the front line is just so good because they don't even need to commit the Galio, Wukong, or really anything to the front line. They can make one of them engage or maybe even up to two, and one can peel back for the Kaisa, or they can full commit to like a Wukong, Galio, dive. into Seraphine alt dive. So they have a lot of ways they can play a team fight. So they're they're very versatile in that regard. And I think that's actually going to be very difficult for McNally to fight into. It's it's gonna require Strathcona positioning incorrectly. Say the Kaisa's out of position. Well, you got a Camille Kazik and uh and a uh, Caitlyn from downtown, right? And that will <laughs> melt you if you're standing in the wrong spot. But when you have a when you have just so much presence in the form of the Galio, Wukong, Trundle, and even the Seraphine with her shields and her ultimate, it's very difficult to approach this Kaisa, even if they full dive on you. So I think McNally is really going to need to play around those side lanes and take advantage of their like early game damage in a few of these lanes, but also just their uh, amount of pressure they can exert on the map. And also with the rise too, we haven't highlighted on a lot, is you get a lot of just maneuverability out of his ultimate as well. Yeah, yeah he can also he can match the Galio in this um, like in in the roaming phase during the game. So if Galio goes top lane, Rides has his ultimate to follow along and just turn it what would be a 2v1 in favor of Strathcona into a 2v2. Yeah, precisely. So I think it's going to be a lot about this early game because Trundle does is a little bit weaker in the early game as he gets his levels up, while Kha'Zix just does so much damage with that isolated bit. So do you think Kha'Zix can duel Trundle at like 3 on, in, a, in a 1v1? In a 1v1, I... Honestly, I'm not that, that familiar with this matchup, but I don't I... think it's mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna be it's gonna be happening though because uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> No, no, that's completely fair because it's. I think it's going to come down. I think it's going to be kind of a key focal point if the Kha'Zix to starts uh, decides to start counter jungling. Now that oh, will yeah. happen if the Kha'Zix gets ahead because this is one of the main key parts of Kha'Zix is if he does get ahead of your your jungler on your team, he can very easily go in your jungler and just abuse the fact that he for one he has a fast clear, but two if your if your jungler comes down and he's down a level maybe down a couple kills, Kha'Zix can one v one him. Like it, it doesn't really matter who you're playing just because of the simply high burst damage that Kha'Zix offers. Now, Trundle does have really good dueling and can maybe sustain longer than others, but if the Kha'Zix does get ahead, Trundle's jungle becomes almost a no-man's land outside of maybe if the Galio comes down or something like that. So it's going to be important to look and see what the, like, kind of the mid-jungle synergy is, because if it just comes down to jungle v. jungle and the Kha'Zix gets ahead, it's not a good time for really Trundle or any other uh, jungler. Yeah, I was just thinking that we might not actually see a lot of 1v1s in the jungle just because of these roaming mid laners that we have. Galio, as you mentioned, can just join with his ultimate. Rise can also just join with his ultimate as well. So there's not going to be a lot of 1v1s maybe. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty key because if it does come down to it, because I have, you know, you've all played solo queue and <laughs> it's not a good time. But I think in this more structured team setting, that's not going to be as much of the case with the Kha'Zix. And I think it's going to be more the Kha'Zix is enabling the 1-3-1 the one one play style, putting pressure down and just enabling his team to split push or even split pushing himself uh, or getting his lanes ahead in the early game so they can delay that inevitable team fight that Strathcona has. Because I think McNally needs to win early because even early, early on definitely. they do a ton of turret damage i think like past i think it's like 20 minutes uh when the or whenever the turret plates fall that's really when minutes. they're looking to just push and just make as much impact as they can so i think snowballing is important but assuming both teams scale up at the same time i think it's going to be very difficult for strathcona i mean for mcnally to play against strathcona if they're not incredibly confident in their one three one yeah, definitely. I'm definitely looking towards the bottom lane uh, for McNally's side, just because of how strong the Caitlyn and Morgana is. I'm assuming that Kha'Zix will be will be focusing uh, his attention mostly in the early game uh, on the on the bot side of the map. Yeah, how how would you say the other uh, solo lanes are gonna go? Like like who's kind of priority in each lane? For top lane, it's just it's gonna be a Bruiser versus Bruiser, uh, not Bruiser. Sorry. It's going to be a lot of fighting, and Camille, if she can land the... Oh wait, Camille went Ignite. I'll definitely change this things think... up. Yeah. Wait, no, he went Ignite Teleport. Yeah. I, I like that energy. Now, it does limit your flash, but with just the chain hook that um Camille has, it should enable her to just not really worry about that too, too much. 
Yeah, along with if she can land that, if she can land land the hook shot onto Wukong and layer it up with this ignite, she's gonna have a lot of kill pressure. And it looks like we might be having a little bit of an invade. A little bit of an invade. See if the uh, so Lila gets out of there as early as she can. Oh, just man, if that had hit, it'd been not a good time. But that's actually why I, we were touching on it uh, yesterday in the last game of why people will position in these like bushes where they're standing because it allows you to detect invades early on and avoid just early cheese strats like that or some of the different buff steals that you can run into in the early game. Yeah, definitely. If if the the main reason why they want to invade though, I'm assuming is to get uh, the Kha'Zix ahead. As he said, this early game is going to be very crucial uh, for the side of McNally. And if they can get these solo lanes ahead, there's just going to be so much pressure during the mid game and it's going to be difficult for Skona or Strathcona to match it up. That being said, I do think that Strathcona has an easier to execute team composition, definitely in team fights. So Strathcona, they're definitely going to be looking for these fights around the dragon around the Rift Herald, maybe? Yeah, definitely. So I yeah, think it's going to come down to that too. And just to put a little bit of a stakes on the line here, this is a very, very important game for McNally because it's going to tie them up with Osborne in the group because McNally did go, they're currently sitting at two and one and an Osborne who's sitting above them is sitting at three and oh. So they do manage to get this game. They're going to get above that three game threshold, which is kind of where you want to be in a, in a pool setting. Cause in our, in our current pool, each team plays five games. And when you're obviously up uh, a three games, you've won a majority of your games and it's not very likely other teams are going to be able to tie with you or anything like that. The only other close uh, team in this particular pool, as you guys saw earlier, is Lizard 2 who's sitting, uh, so, yeah, Lizard 2 who's sitting at uh, two and one cool. as well. So th that's their current competition. They need to do this because not only are they going to tie up with Osborne, they're going to be ahead of Lizard. So I think this game is very, very important. Well, Strathcone is only sitting at one and two. So even if they do, it might still be a little bit dicey for them to make it into finals, but they also need to win this game to even have a chance of making it into the finals. Yeah, definitely. And you can see how the bot lane is already going pretty well for, well, the top end bot lane is already going very well for McNally. Like they're getting the push in. Camille is going to be crashing this wave into the turret. And, and that, there's that that's the game the CC. Lane we're talking about. Yeah, it's just, it's so potent because I think uh, level one binding is like, nearly i think it's like one and a half seconds and then trap is another second so they, they tie you up for like nearly three seconds and you just can't move and also caitlin <laughs> when she traps you gets her gets a headshot for free so the amount of damage you just get is ridiculous we have an early tower dive coming up from the camille but here's the early this is actually what i wanted to see i want to know who wins this 1v1 and it looks like it is trundle but unfortunately camille da comes down and turns this around a beautiful oh flash God. coming out from the kha'zix and that is you don't want the camille who's already winning lane to get another kill down but that's actually actually a really interesting thing i was interested to see who could win the early dueling and it is the trundle but as i alluded to earlier if the lanes respond properly you can swing it in your favor and that's exactly what camille did and got herself a kill and there's an assist down onto the kha'zix so this is very heavily starting to swing in mcnally's favor if they can keep this up because they need to snowball in this early game and if they do their 131 comp is going to be able to excel much easier yeah you can already see she uh camille backed teleported uh teleported back into the lane with the Sheen over this Wukong. So she's going to be very strong compared to uh, her opponent. And it seems like... And it seems like the... Uh, Oh wait, I was no, oh. I was not gonna yeah, get Yeah, there's just kind of some fighting in the mid lane here. The rise is hitting down. Oh, oh no. the binding from downtown. That's gonna knock down the uh trundle there. Unfortunately, we kind of swooped away at the end there as there was some fighting up in the top lane. So a really important thing to note is that is that's another kill. There's a kill on the ADC, a kill on the mid laner, and a kill on the top laner for McNally. They're snowballing all of their lanes, and as you saw in that fight up in the top lane, the Wukong just got instantly chunked. So this is pretty much Camille winning that lane because she's ahead. And it's just not going to be good for uh, Wukong. So Strathcona needs to scale up. They need to get to this like mid to late game where their team fight comp excels. But if this keeps going like this, McDally is just going to snowball ahead and just not let them play the game. Yeah, you can see that Kha'Zix. All of the um, all of the fights have been happening around Scuttlecrab, and McNally has been winning uh, won both of them. So Kha'Zix he got the double scuttle, and that's going to put him at a advantage. 
a level uh, advantage over this trundle and that's going to be crucial oh my yeah I just this is what happens like for one when camille gets sheen it's it's, it's ridiculous yeah. her damage just skyrockets up but she's already had priority in this matchup so it just gets even more insufferable i mean i i should be used to Cam seeing camille do so much damage but i'm still not for some reason <laughs> Yeah, this is when you get oh, Here we wait, go. We, oh we looked away for a second and that was a good, probably a good hook shot uh and it looks like no didn't even need to spend the all to, to confirm that kill and now that's that top lane is pretty much lost so it's kind of down to because he's just getting turret dove at this point so it's like how can wukong come back and play this lane and it, i don't think they should be sending the jungler up there either because he's behind too camille is two levels up wukong doesn't even have ultimate and camille is just dumpstering him in lane i don't think there is a way that he can come back from this lane, to, even though it's very early on in this game. But it's going to be very difficult uh, for Wukong to kind of make an impact. Yeah, I think it's going to be very hard for him to even just survive as well. But here's what I was talking about. The Kha'Zix just gets so precedent in this lane. The Galio is close by. This is what happens when the Kha'Zix gets ahead of your jungler. Because the uh, as you see, the Kha'Zix is, I think, up a level. And... He, up a serrated dirk which is a, a pretty big power spike early on and this is what kha'zix can do he can just walk into your jungle steal your camps and if you you happen to be there as well he just gets a little bit of extra gold because you probably can't 1v1 him unless you're uh mid lane unless your mid laner's there to respond and turn it into a 2v1 yeah all of the lanes for mcnally have been going very well and they have advantages in every single lane and including the jungle um, oh, we got a gank on the no, mid lane no. here, and all the Galio just gets out, but the Rise is running under Ooh. tower, a good E to finish it off. And here comes a side thing down in the mid lane. It's just constant fighting all the way around. McNally just has so much precedence in these lanes. Unfortunately, uh, just, yeah, Strathcona picked into like kind of a more scaling comp, and the hardest part of executing scaling comps is just surviving through that early game, particularly against comps like the one McNally's running. And it's just, they're getting behind, and now in order to just to stifle the bleeding, it's so, so difficult. Yeah, they're, they're already... Four th uh, 4.5k gold behind. It's it's not even 10 minutes into the game yet, and it's going to be very diff difficult. You can see Morgana just... Yeah, just a lock down <laughs> there. The Galio ult does give him to keep him alive, Black but... Shield. Yeah, just Black Shield is just, it's so potent, but also you, just because you have so much precedent in this mid lane. Now, I, I mean, I was about to say there's so much precedent in the bot lane to the point where now the Caitlyn can start 2v1ing, so... Kai'Sa's not in a good spot. No, okay, so it's in not a great spot. Oh, All oh, that oh. that hitbox is not okay. Riot, please. That was like a mile <laughs> to her left. <laughs> but yeah, it's just you have so much presence in this bot lane, and those. Oh, yeah, we're just, I'm trying to talk lane. about things. There's more kills up in the top lane. It's and it's so difficult to uh, around this. But with the bot lane, with the Caitlyn being so far ahead, you open up the Morgana, just roam around, and as you saw, it's been so potent already. It's changed the mid lane. It's affected the jungle, and then. Fortune's just kind of an isolated island up there, and the only way you can really get around these is just proper uh, wave control, which unfortunately is actually a fairly difficult thing to do, and it looks like Strathcona's players aren't as familiar with it, because Wukong's wave, even though he is behind, has been occasionally actually just pushing ahead of him, and that should be able to get a lot of free kills that otherwise probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah, not even just the free kills. You can also see the CS differential between the Camille and the Wukong. Well, also the other lanes as well. McNally is ahead in CS in every single lane, and that is, it's it, it amounts to more than just two kills in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and like not only are they ahead in kills, yeah, the ahead in CS just gives them such a huge gold advantage because you see, like Camille has already got like two entire items built, while Wukong's just sitting on one. And I imagine she's probably got a lot of gold in her pocket as well, so getting very close to that very early mythic, getting like a mythic by ten minutes is not usually something that happens. Yeah, def uh, something earlier uh, that we didn't touch on was the dragon take by uh, Kha'Zix. So when we saw the uh, invade from Kha'Zix into the red buff, we were uh, there might be more fighting right here. Okay, oh, I think Wukong's gonna wisely get out of there. With the bot lane. Oh, that's so much damage, but the heal comes down and barely keeps the Kai'Sa alive. Oh, no! No! <laughs> no! no! So, does not quite able to get there in time to block the shot, take the bullet for a friend. <gasps> but Sweet could have taken a bullet. Here's another lockdown into the trap underneath, and all oh, that combo is just so disgusting. And McNally is executing it to a key. Yeah, you can see how the priority that Caitlyn and Morgana have over this lane, which is. And during the invade, Morgana was allowed to cover uh, the Kha'Zix as well, making sure that uh, he doesn't die 
from another ch uh, from the trendle or anything and you can see this deep vision that they're laying down making sure that they can track the tr trundle later in the stages and it looks like that there might be a little bit of a collapse onto the morgana but i feel like that she is safe with this blast cone right here yeah exactly and just as you said this, this vision is so crucial as well because if you know where the trundle is you see how the kha'zix is punishing and just basically took his entire top jungle he was up on Rift Herald and stuff like that. Now, they do have a little bit of a collapse coming down here because they, uh, Caitlyn is going for the turret, but the they decide not to opt into anything. Yeah, the Black Shield can just mitigate all, all of the CC that uh, Seraphine can put out. If she does get the, uh, the double root onto the Morgana, the Black Shield just protects her so she can just freely walk away. Oh, and there's, there's an ult coming down. Will the turret shots be quite enough? But no, the Caitlyn still has flash up. The Kaisa's going in, but doesn't opt to go for a bit more. And there's just a little bit of trading going back and forth here. Is here it Rift direct... Herald? Yeah, I think, I think the Rift Herald is down. Yeah, it's down in the mid lane there. Kha'zix took that off. Yeah, a couple minutes ago. But actually, that's just going to be a free turret took in, taken in the mid lane. And yeah, McNally is just playing this so well. They're exerting pressure all over the map. They're winning all of their lanes. And it's to the point where Strathcona now just needs to like basically hunker down and farm. But they can't because every <laughs> single lane can basically tower dive at this point. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, Observer, can we see the Dragon Timer as well? And... Oh, we got... Now we got to fight. All right, and... Yeah, what looked like a dead <laughs> rise in the mid lane oh, there, my. unfortunately, goes the way of uh, McNally there. Just a lot of, like, the big thing, too, is Rise is usually a little bit weaker in the early game, more based around the scaling, but, you know, but you don't really need kills. to scale when you're already 4 and 0, almost at 100 CS by 12 minutes. Like, not only has McNally been playing these comps effectively, understanding how to pressure their lanes, they're also all just CSing extremely well. And it's all represented by the gold lead up at the top. It's it's over, it's like nearly, no, it's over 11k at this point. And a lot of that is actually from the CS, too. Fair even being. just ignoring the straight kills. Yeah, they almost got all f uh, all 15 of the turret plates, and it's not even 14 minutes yet. I believe there's just one more in the top lane that they haven't gotten. This is this is just an insurmountable lead on the side of McNally. It's going to be very difficult for Strathcona to find a way back. But even if they do find the perfect team fight, even if they do find the perfect wombo combo, they're not going to have enough damage to to kill all of McNally. No, they're likely going to be able to just maybe take down like one character, which is good shutdown and gold stuff uh, and stuff like that. But you run into the problem of there's now like maybe two or three more carries left over that can just kill you instead of the one you killed. Yeah, if you kill the Rise, there's still the Caitlyn left over. And Camille, sh she's still going to be diving into your backline as well. And we can see th that uh, the dragon being taken right now is this Infernal Drake. So it's just going to give them more damage, and what is the? And it's an ocean soul as well. So even if you do do any damage onto uh, the side of McNally, they can just heal up from this ocean soul. And it looks like that they're also going to be getting this last turret plate as well. Yeah, and they're going to get it right before it falls. I think actually a cool thing we're seeing showcased here as well is just like when you get ahead, you can actually usually mitigate a lot of weaknesses in your comp. Now, it doesn't really matter what comp you're running, but for example, this comp that McNally's playing is more traditionally kind of a, what, like a 1-3-1 one, one comp. You kind of yeah. want to run on side lanes and stuff like that, but because they've snowballed themselves so hard, they can actually just take a 5v5 team fight and likely win as well. Now, I don't think it's worth for them to do that because instead they can just pressure side lanes and force people to come to them, and then they just get more on the other side of the map, but... You can just straight up team fight the team fight comp at this point because you are just so, so far ahead. Yeah, definitely. Unless if you get rid of all the carries in one go, that's it's it's gonna be very difficult for Skull oh, to nice flash. find Edwin. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, it is pretty dire straits for Strathcona. <laughs> Not to put the tail in the coffin, but this is pretty much O'Nally's, O'Nally's, sorry, McNally's game to lose, and they're gonna have to do quite a lot to lose it. I mean, I was talking about Ocean Soul earlier, but if this pace keeps go come going, I don't think we're even gonna see an Ocean Soul. No, at this current pace, yeah, I don't, I don't think the Ocean Soul is gonna come down. Like they've have so much siege damage, they're able to just push on these turrets. Like 
I think it's what, like, I think we're at 14 minutes yet. So there's a little fight up on the top lane here. The Wukong's uh, knocking him up, but he's just so far behind. Oh, the Galio engage yeah, though is very good. I think they might actually be able to finish up the oh, cause no. here, but no, a good flash comes out. And this is kind of what we're talking about. Sure, you can take down the one carry, but there's three more left that you have to deal with. And the Camille is just melting him down, and they might actually be able to get the Camille down. But no, the healing comes down, and a beautiful triple kill secured by the Camille. This is Caitlyn, unfortunately, just cleaning up the rest of the crew. And McNally just fighting that so, so well. And it looked like the Kha'Zix almost would have got caught out. Now, if the teams were a bit more even, the um, Kha'Zix definitely would have died in that case. But because they're just so far ahead in levels, items, and stuff like that, you see that like that was a great engage up in the top, up in the top, oh, yeah, upper definitely. jungle. But because they're just so far ahead, you just even don't win a lovely engage like that. Yeah, there's nothing much else that I can say. It was, it was a good engage. But they didn't have the damage to back it up, and well, McNally, they were able to escape with the skin of their teeth, especially the Kha'Zix. Yeah, this is just kind of the nature of here, but actually McNally is putting on like a great show of how to play when you have stronger lanes. Like, they, they played around their advantages, they knew where they could be strong, and they just played around it and just buy, and just... I mean, there's not a lot more to say of, like, they almost played this game perfectly. Now, there are, obviously, you can, like, nitpick and look at little things, but overall, they, they knew how their comp was strong, they knew what lanes they had priority in, and they knew that their jungle was a bit stronger than the Trundle, particularly around level 6. And they just used that, they roamed around the map properly, they'd taken basically pretty much every neutral objective that have spawned. It is actually a pretty masterclass showing, and even though it, like, we're at 16 minutes, this feels like a team that should look like almost at, like, 25 or 30 minutes. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I do have a question to ask you. Do you think that we're going to be seeing the perfect game? Oh, yeah, true. We almost are at a perfect. They, like, yeah. And we oh. especially with the Kha'Zix narrowly avoiding <laughs> death there. Yeah, I don't I don't know if they're going to die here. Like, I haven't lost a turret. Yeah, no, I know. I honestly, I think we're going to see a perfect because even we we saw earlier, even if uh, Strathcona has like such a, like, a great engage, they don't usually come out on top simply because they're just so far behind from the snowballing effects of this game. Because even your, your your Morgana, who's like probably your squishiest member on your team currently, just won't even die to a Wukong. And that's going to be a clean up here. And honestly, with the Rift Herald there, I think they might finally be able to put the nail in the coffin here uh, for Strathcona and McNally. Yeah, just running it into the base. Oh, that all did so much damage. Was, if if, uh, if Kaiser didn't heal right there, she, she'd be dead. Yeah, and honestly, just look at this. Like, you can just turret dive at this point, too. Just cleaning up these kills. The turret damage is just inconsequential at this point. And yeah, they're just running it down here. Going to finish off the base here. And I think this is McNally getting the perfect game. They wanted to set themselves up to be at the they're top diving, of their group. They're diving. Oh, they're diving. Oh my goodness, they got out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they're pouring oh, the perfect game. Oh, no, I, think, I think they're finally going to die. No, Camille doesn't go down. Oh, McNally <laughs> went for the full BM play. Dove under the tower. And even the Trundle can't fight the Morgana off at the side lane. Now they might be looking up to pad their KDs with one last Seraphine. And that is McNally picking up almost a, like, no, actually it a perfect, perfect game Jesus. over Strathcona in just sheerly dominating fashion. Yeah, at the end of the game, they were 20,000 gold up, and that is just absurd from the seams. Just pure domination from McNally on, in every single moment of the game. Yeah, and usually we have this time set aside to kind of break down the game, look at some key moments. Is there kind of anything you saw like what caused McNally to get so far ahead and obviously they're winning their lanes but like what maybe particular fights do you remember or what particular moments were just like key for McNally to secure that victory and lead themselves eventually to like a, a perfect victory in this game it's the second kill in the game uh the kill onto the the trundle I believe uh in the top lane so what happened was uh Kha'Zix and Trundle they were one v one each other and it seemed like uh Trundle was going to win but Camille, because she had the pressure in the, she had the advantage in the top lane, she was able to calm down to cover her jungler and make sure that he gets out alive and even pick up a kill for herself. So that is kind of what snowball, that kind of what started the snowball. And down in the bot lane as well, if you, if you get rooted by Morgana Q, by Morgana Dark Binding, Caitlyn is just going to be able to follow up. And that is exactly what happened this game. There were just so many picks that, yeah. Yeah, exactly, because after that Kha'Zix kill, we basically just got to the point where the Observer couldn't keep up with all the action because they were just fighting in every lane, kills going down. We'd finish up one kill, and then we go like back up top lane. There was some another kill happening up there, so 
but yeah, honestly, I think it came down to that moment. And really, we, we talked about it a lot near the end of the game. It's just McNally knew how to play their strong comp and where they were strong, where their comp was good and how to play winning lanes and just kind of snowballed to victory there. And that does set them up to be three and one in their group. The only one in front of them currently is Osborne sitting at 3-0 and they're looking to probably take it in. Honestly, if that's their level of play, I think they can definitely count themselves and maybe one or uh, rank one or two in their group. But with Osborne being three, and know, and it looks like, uh, did they pl- actually, I'm going to look, did they play McNally? Um, Osborne, oh yeah. I so Osborne did actually did play one. McNally and they did win the game. So that yeah, actually probably cool. tells you exactly how good uh, Osborne two rather in this case is. So this is actually a pretty killer group going on here, but I hope you all enjoyed that game and we're going to actually quickly shoot it off to a break. And then after that, we'll go through the bracket real quickly and move on to our second game of only one versus center high. Don't go.